Today marks the seventh day of the humanitarian pause in Gaza that the United States worked closely with Israel, Qatar, and Egypt to put in place. The seventh day that hostages have been freed and are returning home to their families. The seventh day that significantly more humanitarian assistance is getting into the people of Gaza who need it. And the seventh day that civilians in Gaza have been able to move to safer areas. I've come again here today to advance a number of goals. Our immediate focus is working with our partners to extend the pause so that we can continue to get more hostages out of Gaza and more assistance in. Together with the UN, uh, our partners in the region, we have significantly increased the flow of food, water, medicine, fuel to power desalination plants, hospitals, and other critical infrastructure. Just over the past week, the mechanisms that we helped to negotiate and implement have more than doubled the number of trucks getting into Gaza. But this is still not enough to meet the needs of its people, which is why we continue to work urgently to get more aid in and to get it in faster. The government of Israel agrees with the imperative of humanitarian assistance and the need to sustain it. Prime Minister Netanyahu also made clear that Israel intends to resume its military operations against Hamas when Hamas stops releasing hostages. As we've said from the outset, Israel has the right to do everything it can to ensure that the slaughter Hamas carried out on October 7th can never be repeated. Hamas cannot remain in control of Gaza. It cannot retain the capacity to repeat that carnage. That was only underscored by this morning's appalling terrorist attack on people waiting at a bus stop in Jerusalem, which killed three Israeli civilians and wounded at least six others, including two American citizens. Hamas has claimed responsibility for that attack, but as I've also said since I first came here after October 7th, the way Israel defends itself matters. It's imperative that Israel act in accordance with international humanitarian law and the laws of war, even when confronting a terrorist group that respects neither. In my meetings today with the Prime Minister and senior Israeli officials, I made clear that before Israel resumes major military operations, it must put in place humanitarian civilian protection plans that minimize further casualties of innocent Palestinians. That means taking more effective steps to protect the lives of civilians including by clearly and precisely designating areas and places in southern and central Gaza where they can be safe and out of the line of fire. It means avoiding further significant displacement of civilians inside of Gaza. It means avoiding damage to life-critical infrastructure, like hospitals, like power stations, like water facilities. And it means giving civilians who have been displaced to southern Gaza the choice to return to the north as soon as conditions permit. There must be no enduring internal displacement. All of this can be done in a manner that still enables Israel to achieve its objectives. But Israel has the most sophisticated, one of the most sophisticated militaries in the world. It is capable of neutralizing the threat posed by Hamas while minimizing harm to innocent men, women, and children. And it has an obligation to do so. Ultimately, that's not just the right thing to do. It's also in Israel's security interest. The Prime Minister and members of the War Cabinet agreed with the need for this approach. We discussed the details of Israel's ongoing planning, and I underscored the imperative to the United States that the massive loss of civilian life and displacement of the scale that we saw in northern Gaza not be repeated in the south. As I told the Prime Minister, intent matters, but so does the result. In our ongoing conversations with Israeli, Palestinian, and Arab leaders, We'll discuss practical steps to make real a just and lasting peace and what each of us is prepared to do to help achieve it. We have no illusions this is going to be easy. We will surely have disagreements along the way. But if we're going to move forward on practical steps toward lasting peace, lasting security, we have to be willing to work through these disagreements because the alternative, more terrorist attacks, more violence, more innocent suffering is unacceptable. That's why the United States is here, and we're leading toward this goal. With that, 
happy to take some questions. The first question goes to Humaira Pamuk with Reuters.